And we're back with the 2019 season, the Zoe Bowl. Although I guess it's not really the Zoe Bowl anymore. It's uh, more of the Zoe Empire. It's our first season of the new Empire, the 2019 season. Uh, I don't have a whole lot of videos that I'm going to intertwine with this. This is uh, more just of a recap of the draft, and we're going to jump right into it. First off, uh, ESPN out, sleeper bot in. Sorry for the ESPN crash. It's not really on me, but you know, I'm sorry we were using ESPN for this long. Uh, it's a better time than ever to move. For those of you that don't know, at the end of the draft, there was a crash, and you didn't get to pick some of your last players for some of the teams, some teams more than others. Uh, so kind of sucks to happen, but you know, here we are. Uh, I wanted to go over some just draft rankings. Of course, this is very biased. Uh, a lot of my opinion <laughs> on who had the best draft, who had the worst. But I just want to go through some of the teams, highlight some of the stuff. Uh, some of the most expensive players, Saquon Barkley was the most expensive at 92. Uh, so we had 10 players for $70 or more. That's honestly less than I thought. I thought we'd maybe even have more than that. So I thought there was a chance we reached a $100 player. That didn't happen. But uh, still a lot of uh, very expensive players, more so than in the past. Only one team had no players of $50 or more. That's mine. One of my most expensive players, Damien Williams, is outside the uh, top 20 ADP for running backs. Damien Williams, because the Chiefs just signed McCoy. Uh, I wanted to go over my rankings for this year. Uh, see who I think had the best draft, who had the worst, and or cursed. That goes along with being the first, <laughs> first ranked team of mine. Uh, I'll go over some of the ESPN rankings, the ADPs. I'll go over uh, the sleeper bots auto guess for our rankings. So first off, all the teams. I just wanted to say <laughs> I, I looked at a lot of different data, and I uh, wrote down a lot of data. I don't know how much of it matters, but uh, there there was a lot that I, I looked at. Here's kind of the, some of the stuff I narrowed it down when I was looking at my rankings, and even after having this data I have before you, which I'll go over in a second. Uh, even after that, I, I really, it's it's just like, who do you like? You know, just because someone was over $50 doesn't mean I necessarily like them. So, anyway, here's uh, here's some of the stats I, I gathered. Uh, I did the $50 players or more category, and those are what I consider like uh, studs, studs of some sort. So, normally a wide receiver, running back. Um, these are just like straight up studs that can win for you. Brandon has the most with four. And he's kind of known to spend all his money, and you saw how it worked out from last year. You don't have necessarily the most depth around it, but you, know, you have those four studs to carry you, and you know you, you could win it all just doing that. So it's, that's one way to, to draft. Uh, I also tracked the $20 to $49 players, the $10 to $19 players. Uh, these are you know the bread and butter of your team. Uh, you can see me, I had zero $50 players. I had 10 Ten dollar to forty nine dollar players. So having having a more average team, you don't have the studs to make it pop necessarily, but you still have those uh, those average guys to consistently have an okay team. Uh, and then the two to nine dollar players, I view these mainly as uh, your high upside sleepers. So you know if if you have a lot of two dollar players, you probably uh, are picking off the one dollar players and just sniping the ones that you like. Uh, I think this could show potential for, you know, uh, breakout players or just increase your odds a little bit. Uh, Thomas Cole and Matt Erdman had the most with 8, 9, and 12, respectively. So, anyway, these are just some of the stats I collected. I did do the ESPN Top 20 ADP players. So, what that's referencing is you have a Top 20 player in the respective category. So, if it says one tight end, it means I had one tight end in the Top 20. Out of based off ESPN's ADP ranking, so average draft position. Um, so these are not my opinion, but you know, since it's collectively all the ADPs from all the drafts, this is like how they're just generally viewed. So uh, Mike and I actually had the most top twenty players, which was surprising to me. I don't think anyone would be surprised with my phenomenal depth, having two at every position: two quarterback, running back, wide receiver, tight end, and defenses in the top. 20. So not to dwell on that too much. Like I said, it's all kind of random. Speaking of random, uh, Sleeperbot does have us in a certain order in the standings. It's completely random from what I can tell. Uh, I've, I've done these uh, 
top 12 rankings a few times now, been criticized pretty heavily for them, uh, for how inaccurate they can be. So I'm competing this year with uh, the random standings that uh, SleeperBots predicted. I'm going to go off that uh, for final standings and see if I can be more accurate than them. So before revealing the actual rankings, I'll do them in groups of four. These are four teams, I think, for this year, are uh, bottom four teams. I'll start with Vince. I think he has a very young wide receiver core on his, you know, top 20 ADP player ratings. He was the lowest there, and that's because DJ Moore and Ridley don't show up. Christian Kirk, they're not in the top 20s yet. They could be next year, or even this year, maybe, uh, if you believe in the jump. But, you know, they're not, they weren't on the ADP going into this year. They all seem to be centerpieces of their offenses, respectively, or at least have an opportunity to be a big piece. Uh, as far as his running backs, David Montgomery, again, young new guy coming into the system. Chris Carson, young. So he has, he has a lot of really good young players here. I think his team will be fine. I, I just, uh, I, I don't see it winning. So there, <laughs> there's so many teams, it's so hard to pull them all apart and say this one's going to win or this one's going to lose. I don't see this one going all the way, so I'm just going to throw this into the bottom four of not happening this year. Uh, Caleb Brandos, is Mixon and Freeman good or great? Uh, I think I think he needs them to be great to kind of have a shot at, at winning it all. Man, I want to believe in Joe Mixon. He's a player I really like, but that O-line is so bad, and it's already getting injured. I mean, I, I think they're going to be good this year, just like I think Caleb's team, kind of like Vince, good, not great this year. I don't, I don't see Caleb winning it, so... That's how he ends up in the bottom four here. Uh, he's tied in last for two to nine dollar players, which, like I said, I kind of looked at that as you know uh, players that can really help you break out. You know, the sleeper picks, the more you have, the better. Uh, so I, I don't see him getting a lot of help out of nowhere. And uh, is Juju going to dominate without Brown? I feel like this is a huge debate among people whether Juju is going to be like a top three wide receiver or he's going to be just a good wide receiver, not great. Um, I kind of lean towards the latter, and if you spent $74 on a guy you thought was only good, that was kind of a waste. I'm sure Caleb believes, you know, the juju hype, so, but, you know, my opinion, like I said, um, I'm going to go ahead and put it in bottom four. Mike Bishop, <laughs> for this one, my notes are just, how are the Cowboys? Uh, Mike's won a championship this way. He had a lot of Cowboys players, the Cowboys did well, and he did well. So that could easily happen again. Uh, I think that's kind of a coin toss, so I, I'm going to go ahead and just bet against them. Uh, Cooper and Galladay ready to step up? We'll see. I, I, I'm, I don't think that Galladay is going to be great in that offense yet, unless they decide to throw it a lot more. Uh, is Derrick Henry an RB1? Derrick Henry, I don't know. <laughs> he could be a league winner or loser. I'm just not sure. I think Mike will probably have a good team if... Uh, Henry and Cooper end up being as good as he thinks they are. I think Ezekiel Elliott is just solid, so that's a really good centerpiece to have. So this is just personal opinion on his players. I, I don't necessarily love his depth. I'm not a huge believer that Cooper and Galladay are going to be anything special. I hope Derrick Henry sucks, but uh, he could be good, so we'll see. Jason Brandos, uh, obviously I was going to have him in my bottom four. I am excited for something on his team, though. I, I do like that he has the top two tight ends. And we're finally going to see someone weekly starting two tight ends, which we haven't really had before. So that's kind of cool to me. He has one running back and one wide receiver in the top 20, which feels like lack of depth to me. Uh, it's a lot of pressure riding on Kamara and Thielen. Thielen, Thielen I think, is good. Kamara, I think, is good. But again, it's just, man, it's a huge drop-off <laughs> on his team after those two guys. So if anything happens to one of those two, he's in a lot of trouble. I'm not really worried about him only having the Colts quarterback Brissett as uh, his only quarterback. Uh, I've I've easily made some trades for defenses and quarterbacks, so I'm not going to hold that against him too much. I'm just going to assume that he addresses that down the line. Um, but yeah, injury prone Will Fuller. Tevin Coleman was uh, <laughs> just said today to be the backup and not the starter. Uh, Tyrell Williams with Oakland. Ew. I, I mean, I I'm just not a fan of the team personally, so. Obviously, I'm going to have Jason Brownos in the bottom four here. All right, so this is a uh, middle of the pack. Hard to say for me if they're going to make the playoffs or not, or you know, maybe they just weren't good enough. They're missing something for me to put them in the top four. So Brian Smith, 
he has Gurley and Connor. So were they great deals, or is there a reason that they uh, kind of dropped? Connor, Connor, uh, man, that's that's hard for me to call. He, he slowed down at the end of last year. I, I want to say he's a safe RB2, so I'm not going to hold that against Brian at all. Gurley, it's just... Is he still going to be around by the time playoffs come, or is his knee going to act up? Uh, that's the only <laughs> Gurley's knee is the only reason he wasn't the most expensive player in this draft, I think. Kittle should be okay. People love Kittle this year. There's, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm nervous about San Francisco's offense. I keep hearing about how great it's going to be for the last two years, so I, I, I need it to actually show up and do something. I like Cooper Cup, Robbie Anderson. I like a lot of players on Brian's team. Weak depth, high upside. So that like like Gurley. Gurley's a great analogy for his entire team. I see the upside of his team. I see how he could be great. Um, but I, I, I'm worried for the longevity. One or two minor things could happen, and the whole season's derailed. So that's that's how Brian ended up staying middle of the pack for me this year. Matt Erdman. He had the most two to nine dollar players, which again I think that is kind of an indicator maybe of his ability to have breakout players. Um, like the Giants, uh, he has a lot running on Saquon Barkley as the most expensive player of the draft. He has all of his running back chips put into it. McCoy joined the Chiefs. You know, there's varying opinions on what that means. I think that's more of Andy Reid doing an old friend a favor. I, I don't see McCoy actually being a useful part of the offense. But at the end of the day, Matt Ehrmans, he's middle of the road for me just because he has so much riding on Saquon Barkley week to week. Um, hopefully that works out for him. Lack of depth at running back. Like I said, with the whole most 2-9 to nine players, maybe he has a breakout. I just can't... I don't see where the breakout will come from. That's hard to predict. And not that the, this hurts him this year, but I'm kind of wondering, does Deshaun Jackson, McCoy, and A.J. Green, all starters for him currently on this roster, are they even going to be in the league next year? <laughs> so uh, this, this team is a uh, high-risk, high-reward. I see that in a lot of the players he has, DK Metcalf, Eric Ebron, etc. So we'll, we'll see how it does. Middle of the road, it wouldn't surprise me if this team did great or bad. It's, this is a hard one for me to predict. Josh Wood, um, is Eckler the real deal now? That's my first question. I don't think that Melvin Gordon plays this year for the Chargers. I know he's supposed to be back week eight. But kind of like with Bell last year, I think he doesn't care, and he just sits the whole year out and expects the Chargers to just let him go, which I think they probably will at the end of the year. So does that mean Eckler's the real deal? I, for a long time, said no, he's, he won't thrive. I think his upside at most is similar to Tevin Coleman last year. I think he's best as a change of pace back, and I, I don't know. The NFL is this weird thing where they try to make a change of pace back and every down back, and it's... It hurts everyone. It hurts the team and them. So we'll, we'll see what happens with Eckler. <laughs> How hard can Hopkins and Thomas carry for him? He has two seventy-three dollar wide receivers. So you know you, you've got to think he's expecting or thirty to forty points every week, if not more. Another question I have for this team that I have to wonder is: Will Andrew Luck come back and join this quarterback powerhouse of Rodgers and Mahomes? Uh, but no, seriously, I, I I do like his team. It's the running back thing is hard for me to get over. I, I value, I maybe overvalue, some would say, running backs. And uh, to have it all riding on Ingram and Eckler, who I don't love, despite how good the team is on paper, like my personal bias is just withholding him from being a top four team. Thomas Peterson. I trust that Thomas always finds a way. So I think Thomas will be just barely short of the playoffs or just barely sneaking in, but... He'll, he'll always find a way to be an okay team. Uh, I think Brady and Doyle are overrated for fantasy. I I would rather have Ebron than Doyle, personally, this year. Uh, I don't trust Odell or Cook to stay healthy for 16 games. Cook, I don't, I don't trust Cook to stay healthy for eight games this year. So we'll see. It's not the team that I would draft. Obviously, I didn't draft it. Uh, Thomas has some, you know, heavy upside if, if Cook could stay healthy, you know, if if David Johnson can return to his uh, greatness days now that he has a new offensive coordinator, uh, if Odell Beckham does stay healthy and the Browns are for real, like, yeah, I, I, I can see how this team's good. I just, man, I, it, it, it's similar to Josh in the sense of it's good on paper, but I have so many personal bias against people on this team that 
there's no way I was going to put it in my top four. So top four dogs. I'll start off with Joe. Um, with his team, he, had, he has a, a great big three running backs, which, again, personal bias. I love running backs. McCaffrey, Fournette, and Aaron Jones. Now, are Aaron Jones and Fournette going to stay healthy? If I was forced to make a $1,000 bet one way or the other, will Fournette and Aaron Jones be healthy this year? I would have to bet against. There's no way that, <laughs> that I would assume they're going to finish the year. I would give Fournette 10 games, and I would give Aaron Jones 8. That'd probably be the line I'd bet against. So we'll see. I'm shocked that Joe drafted Fournette. I, I thought Joe hated him. Uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll see. But yeah, those, those three big running backs with Devontae Adams, I mean, this is a true boomer bust team. He's riding heavy on those guys. Outside of them, not a not a whole lot of depth, but you know, with those with those core guys, uh, I think he could have something good. So we'll see. I, I, it's good enough that I put him in my top four. When I see when I see a team with four people, I think could be really good. It's hard for me to keep him out. Jason Cole, uh, he's here because of his phenomenal depth, tied for the most in two to nineteen dollar players. I uh, can. Miles Sander or Dave, uh, Duke Johnson Jr. emerge for him? I don't know. I'm, I'm assuming one of the two is at least workable for him. That, combined with his, again, phenomenal depth, uh, is why he's on here. So Joe, you know, four big names I like. Cole, best depth that I like. All right, next is uh, my team. I've kind of mentioned it a couple times. Is Damian Williams in trouble? As the Damian Williams owner, I don't think so. I just, man, I... I just think McCoy's not good anymore. So I guess I'm not personally worried. Maybe it hurts him a little bit until they figure out how bad McCoy is or until he gets hurt. But me personally, I feel just fine with him. I was shocked to see him outside the top 20 in the ADP of running backs. Uh, is Mac or TY worth flex spots? I mean, I don't know if I'm going to be playing them both week to week. I think personally the Colts will be bad this year, but I think they're both... Very cheap players, low investments for me, 18 and $20. So I think, yeah, I have a one of them will probably start every week, depending on if I think the air game or the ground game is going to be working better. Uh, I think I have a lot of depth, phenomenal depth, maybe not as much as Cole, uh, maybe not as much as Matt had, but you know, I, I feel really good about my team. As far as top, top 20 ADP players, again, I was tied for first. At two at every single spot. Uh, so I think I have a pretty good team. Last team on the top four that I have is uh, Brandon Skalitsky, my brother. Um, will, Melvin Gordon, will Melvin Gordon play this year? Um, since I put this slide together, I've really convinced myself that he's not going to play this year. And uh, I'm not a fan of the bench outside of Gore and Jones. So for Brandon, it's maybe surprising to people that I have on my top four. Uh, the thing is, I thought his team was absolute garbage last year, and he just had three big players, and they carried him. That's kind of what he did again this year. It's three big wide receivers. Long term, maybe you know Antonio Brown and Julio Jones aren't the best for Dynasty, but for this year, um, I'm just going to assume <laughs> Brandon does it again. I don't, I don't want to bet against him again. So I'll put him on the top four as my wild card pick. Uh, so those are my, my top four dogs. And just to run him, run him back again, so I know you guys don't want me to just do it in groups of four, so here's the list of my actual picks uh, from the worst to the best team. Uh, I'll start with first place, Jason Cole, second myself, third Brandon, fourth Joe, fifth Josh, sixth Matt, seven Thomas, eight Brian, ninth Vince, tenth Caleb, eleventh Jason, and in last place, sorry Mike, I have Mike Bishop. And here's the comparison with... Uh, Sleeper bots, random standing order they put us in. Uh, we do agree on Caleb and Jason. And then lastly, I know this video is running a little long, so I'll try to go through this somewhat quickly. I just want to do a, a week one preview, look at the matchups, uh, see with what I agree or disagree with Sleeper. With the first matchup, Thomas for size, Sleeper has Thomas winning. I'm going to disagree. Uh, I think... D. Williams, even versus Jacksonville, still outperforms his projection. I think the Rams have scored the Bears. And I think my flex and tight end are just much better than Thomas's. So 
Uh, what would have been a close matchup once you get to that tight end double flex and defense have me winning all of those. So I just, based off that, I think I have to win this one. Mike Bishop versus Brandon Skalitsky. Mike versus Brandon Skalitsky. Uh, I think Brandon's three wide receivers. I wrote running backs, but I mean wide receivers carry him. I'm not sure Elliott plays week one. This is still kind of blurry. If he does, that could change this whole matchup. Um, is Drake or Freeman going to be enough to work or to matter? Uh, I don't know the answer to that, but I'm betting against it, obviously. <laughs> Tavon Austin and Andy Dalton are starting week one on Brandon's team, which, man, that's gross, and I want to make Brandon's team lose just because of that, but I'm, I'm going to go with my gut on this one and <laughs> go with Brandon, so... That's twice I'm going against SleeperBot's predictions. So on my third game, I'll actually agree with them. Brian versus Vince. Um, I, I just like Brian's team. I like, you know, a lot of the people he started. I, Watson, Connor, Cup, Kittle, Sutton, Pettis, they, they all have good matchups. I think they, I think that he wins this week. Jason Brandos versus Josh Woods. Uh, Ingram at Miami is actually a good matchup, but I, I had to put Kamara ahead of him. Uh, that's on... Jason's team. However, outside of that, I feel like Josh destroys him. I, I think Josh wins this by a very large margin. I think this is the biggest win of the week. I don't know if Josh necessarily scores the most points of the week, but I think this is the biggest biggest winning gap between Jason and uh, Josh. Joe versus Caleb. Uh, this one was the hardest one for me to decide, unlike the last one where Josh obviously destroys Jason. Joe versus Caleb Brodnos. Um, this was a close one. This one was hard for him to decide. I, I think Joe has some really top-heavy guys, which is one of the reasons I have him in my top four. Um, but, I, I, man, I just really think Caleb has good matchups this week. So, Barreto has just announced a starter, who's one of his flexes. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I kind of like uh, Caleb to win this, even though that goes against my rankings overall. Last matchup, Matt Erdman versus Brian Smith. I have Brian Smith winning this one. Uh, Matt is starting Randall Cobb, so that alone made me predict him to lose. Uh, Dion Lewis, a genius draft pick, or fool's gold? I don't know. He uh, would not be denied Dion Lewis. Now he has him. We'll see if that works out. I, I don't know. I played that game last year, too. I tend to lean towards the group of people that say Henry is not going to work out, but I do think for the first few games they're going to try to make Henry work. Making Deion Lewis maybe worthless? I don't know. Uh, so I have Brian winning by over 10 points on this one. Then I just want to recap some of the trades. Uh, I traded away a couple rookies for uh, Rams defense and Josh Allen, adding some depth for me on those. I also traded Des Bryant. It wasn't listed in the Sleeper Bot app. This was before Sleeper. I traded Des Bryant for the 49ers defense and maybe the most irrelevant trade that will ever happen in our league. Uh, Randall Cobb and Quincy Anu on Ebron were traded. Uh, MVS, man, he was traded for a second round pick in TJ Yeldon. That is insanity to me. But uh, we'll see if <laughs> MVS works out. I know that a lot of people like MVS, a lot of other people like Geronimo Allison, so we'll see which one emerges. Um, obviously, Joe really liked MVS, I guess. To, man, to give up a second round pick for him, I hope he likes him. So, we'll see. Finally, football's back, and uh, I'll be seeing you guys on a weekly basis.